Hi, my name is Tania Scott, and I'm sitting here with the queen herself, Larray Gilliard. Would you first tell me a little bit about yourself and why you chose to attend Virginia Union University? Um, well, of course, my name is Larray, and <laughs> I'm from New Haven, Connecticut, but why I chose Virginia Union was because I was in a program called College Summit in high school, and one of my mentors was a student at Virginia Union, and he was just describing the dynamics of the school, and it fit, like, everything that I wanted in a university, so. Mm -hmm. What made you change your mind about majoring in mass communications? My freshman year, when I was majoring in mass comm, I enjoyed it, but I just knew it wasn't really what I wanted to do. So, like, you ever have that feeling, you know, like, something's just not right for you at yeah. the time? <laughs> like, not to say it's a bad thing, it's just not for you. And I had, like, this really deep interest in the School of Theology, so when mm -hmm. I went and talked to them about it, they had let me know the difference between the School of Theology for grad school and the Religious Studies undergrad major. And so I felt like that's where I wanted to be. Do you think you'll ever pick back up in mass communications or not? Uh, as of right now, probably not. Okay. Um, what led, oh, well, you pretty much told me religious <laughs> studies is your major, but what really sparked your interest within the field? Um, so what I really like about the religious studies department here is we don't just learn about one particular religion and we don't just learn about the faith aspects of the religion. We learn about the history, how it relates to politics and war and economics and things like that. So I really enjoy learning how religion brings things together full circle. And a lot of times people try not to talk about religion or remove religion from different things when people's motives, their morals, and why they do certain things is actually based off of religion. Yeah. Do you feel that children in like elementary schools and middle school, high school, do you feel that they should have that religious part at their school? Do you feel that they should like, what am I trying to say? <laughs> like, um, you know how they tell you not to pray at school and stuff like that? Do you feel that they should be able to be open with I, it? I definitely feel like the children should have the freedom to practice their own faith. Should the school force one particular faith on a child? No, they should not. Mm -hmm. But I definitely think that the school should be a little more open to allowing children to grow and flourish in every way, academically, spiritually, and any other way that's possible for a kid to grow and be, become a whole being. Yeah. Um, what are your views on women being preachers besides you are studying religious? Um, women being preachers, I feel like if God puts it on your heart, then <laughs> that's your thing. Go for it. Nobody can tell you what God is giving you personally that's just my opinion because you never know somebody may have a vision nobody understands the vision that God gave you because he gave it to you so you could try to explain to somebody all day long well this is what I need to do and this is the word that's on my heart and blah blah and so everybody would just be like I don't see it happening yeah. but then once you play it out if you're obedient to what's on your heart and you do it then everybody wants to hop on the bandwagon so I just feel like if God calls somebody whether you're a kid a boy a girl <laughs> it doesn't matter mm -hmm. um, how has studying religion like affected your relationship with other students on campus or like outside of school when somebody asked you like um, so I feel like a lot of people on campus, my relationships on campus, people just automatically assume like, you're the Bible girl. <laughs> like, you can't make mistakes. You can't do anything because you're a religious studies major. And so sometimes I just have to remind people like, I'm a human being. Everybody. I'm a student just like you. Like, um, I just have a different interest. And then as far as off campus, of course, a lot of people, their next question is, how do you plan to make money? And it's like, uh, God will provide. That. <laughs> Duh. But no, sure um, but yeah, like, um, I feel like people don't see 
the different opportunities that can come from a religious studies degree. Um, and there are multiple, like you can be a chaplain of some sort, you can work for the government because um, as a religious studies major, it is mandatory that we learn Hebrew and other Semitic languages, which is a big portion of the government knowing what like ISIS and other countries are talking about and things like that. So I just feel like it's a lot of things that religious studies has to offer that people don't know. Yeah. Is Hebrew like a hard language to learn? Like, I, I heard a lot of people <laughs> complain about it. It was definitely not easy, but if you put in the work like to practice and remember, it's, it's somewhat easy. It was easier to learn in Spanish for me because of the simple fact that Hebrew is altogether new characters and this new, like these new letters and things <laughs> like that. And I feel like other languages that use the same alphabet we use, learning the different accent marks and stuff was just really hard. So it was altogether new to me, so it was easier for me to pick up on that. <laughs> um, do you plan on going to graduate school? And will you study in theology? <laughs> So um, I probably won't go to the School of Theology or pursue a degree in divinity, but I'm definitely interested in public administration or public policies. Okay, that sounds good. Um, what are some of your plans after graduation? Hmm, I want to travel. I want to go and see the world and just be young and enjoy life. But I also want to make sure that I don't forget about school because I want to be young and also have a master's degree. So um, I looked into a program that really caught my interest in nonprofit management at VCU. So, pray for me, girl. I pray for you to Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are some objectives you will use to reach your goals in life? Mm. I definitely want to find a mentor, somebody who's already experienced the ups and downs of opening your own nonprofit organization or starting your own thing so that they can help me get through different milestones or avoid different things. Um, do you plan to stay in Richmond after graduation or are you going to move back? Yeah, I plan to stay here. Okay. Um, what activities did you participate in on or off campus? Hmm, <laughs> a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> um, well, let's start freshman year. I was in the choir. I did Woman of Elegance and like little step team stuff. Um, sophomore year, I was a cheerleader. Oh, I was in the Residence Hall Association. I don't even know if they still have that or not, but yeah, I was in that. <laughs> um, I was an RA, a Young Life Leader, a Panther Pals Mentor, and now Royal Court. Yes, you did a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is Residence? House Association? What is that? The Residence Hall Association was made up of the king and queen of each residence hall. They used to do it like, um, and I was Miss Newman freshman uh, year. So like they had picked the different people who would represent each residence hall and they came together every so often and would plan stuff for residents like to do with the RAs. Oh uh, yeah, I think I remember that because they did that in Harshorn. Mm -hmm. um, as a former cheerleader, mm -hmm. I know that it was very time consuming. Mm -hmm. So what are some ways that you manage your time while being on the cheerleading squad? Ways that I manage my time. Honestly, back when I was cheerleading, I did not have any time management skill. Like it was either lose out on doing homework or lose out on sleep. So some nights I would just be like, you know what, I'm going to sleep. But then other times I would stay up all night and then be like super exhausted, but my work would be done. So I've grown since then, but um, yeah, time management was not my thing back then. You feel like your grades are better now than when you were on the squad? Um, no, my grades were really good when I was on the team. I just was tired all the time. Yeah. She she worked everybody worked us hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, what are your some What are some of your best memories as a raw raw cheerleader? 
um, the traveling and the bonds that I got to um, establish with a lot of my different teammates. I feel like the year that I cheered, our team was really like a team. Not to say that any other team wasn't a team, but I just know what it's like to be. I've been cheering since I was in sixth grade, so I know what it's like to be on a team of girls who don't really rock with each other or mm -hmm. don't really care for each other, but like we legit made sure everybody had what they had, everybody knew what they needed to know and everything like that. So I thought that was really cool. Cool. Um, what else was um, did you ever think of going back after you had quit? Yeah, I definitely thought about going back. Because um, the only reason I had to stop was because I became an RA and then I had an internship too. So it was like a whole bunch of stuff pulling me in different directions. But I thought about going back this year, but it would have just been too much with the whole with like Miss View Hill and going here, there, everywhere, and then trying to be a raw too. No, I know, cause she would have, she was not gonna have that. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of Royal Court, um, what made you want to run, and who inspired you? Um, who inspired me? I'm gonna start with that, just because. Um, the Miss VU for my freshman year, her name was Kayla Cowher. She was so nice. She was like the sweetest person ever. And it was a really big deal to me. It was a small thing, but she always remembered my name. And I'm like, you probably meet like hundreds of people every day because I'm a freshman. <laughs> I didn't know anything. I didn't know anybody. But she just always made an effort to be like, hey, Lorraine. <laughs> and so like, I just thought that was so nice. And like, um, I just wanted to be that for somebody else, like make somebody feel special, make somebody feel like you're a queen and you can do whatever you put your mind to. Mm -hmm. um, based off the competition that you had, did you feel that you were going to win the title against those um, girls? Yeah. For me, I wasn't, like, when I ran, I wasn't really so much concerned with winning. I know that's weird, like, but... Um, <laughs> At first, it was like, of course, I want to be Miss VU. But one of the things that I had to tell myself before it even all started, like, you know, I'll be praying about everything. Yes, so you have so to. <laughs> I just kind of was like, God, if this is something that you have for me. Like, I want to enjoy the full experience. Help me to enjoy campaigning, whatever I need to learn from this, the different girls, whatever the case may be. But I didn't want to become so consumed in winning that I missed out on the lessons and opportunities that came with just campaigning and going through the whole process. I was like, okay, if my campaign inspires somebody, I felt like I won. Like, <laughs> that, so I don't know. Um, what makes you different from the previous Miss Views? Hmm, I feel like every Miss VU has something different to offer. So like some Miss VUs, they were concerned with loving yourself from the inside out. Then other people were more like mentors and big brother, big sister programs type of thing. So every queen has something different that they wanted to focus on. And my thing was like, embrace your process, whatever your process looks like. So I feel like all of us were different, but my thing more so was enjoying the journey and allowing different obstacles to make you who you are. Yeah. Um, what were some strategies you used? I know that y'all did the cheerleading. Yeah, so um, for my campaign, I got the team together, some of the girls that were on the team when I was on the team and then some of the girls who were on after me and we kind of just t switched up one of the classic <laughs> rah rah cheers and like added my name in it <laughs> so that was a big part of the campaign and then I had like little programs every year and there to try and get people to know who I was and stuff I went door to door and was like introducing myself to people <laughs> so that was fun but, um what is your platform um my platform is don't let your bricks be your boundaries, inspiring all to use life struggles as stepping stones to the top. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are some programs that you did? Um, I had a program called Broken Bricks, and um, I got one of the stone companies around here to donate bricks to my campaign. And basically, I let people come and either decorate a brick with a word that they wanted to overcome or um, a struggle that they had and break that brick with a sledgehammer so that, like, to signify, like, this is no longer going to keep me bound, kind of breaking through it type of thing. Okay. Um, what are some things 
What are some obstacles that you face as Miss Vivian? Mm, I'm only one person. <laughs> so I can't be everywhere at the same time and doing work and doing this, that, and the third the way I would like to. So that's definitely an obstacle is picking and choosing when and where to go and be and what to do and stuff. Just prioritizing. Okay. What are some things that you learned about yourself? Um, I learned that I'm way stronger than I credit myself to be. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> um... The main question that is always asked, <laughs> what makes you a queen? What makes me a queen? Hmm. <laughs> I think it's my heart. Because, like, I don't know, I just love everybody. Like, <laughs> I find stuff to love about the most unlovable situations. So, like, <laughs> I think that's very queenly because if you can't unconditionally love people, people fall short every day, I fall short every day, but if you can't love somebody in spite of that, you can't really be a good leader. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you for sitting with me today. Of course, no problem. I enjoyed you. Yay.